and selection for over 50 years they've been providing unheard of personalized service dj sashing glass adding a touch of class to your glass just two blocks south of mead clark lumber on the corner of dow drive and quilco court at 546-7344 and at djsglass.com it's the loan show on ksro with george adair Call in with your questions now at 636-1350. We're back. Thanks for tuning in to The Loan Show. My name is George Adair, and we're here every Wednesday at 1230 till 1 o'clock, taking your calls and emails and Facebooks and any other p- courier pigeon or whatever else, however else you want to get to me. Smoke um, signals. Smoke we signals. <laughs> well, I don't have very good angle i can see some of santa rosa from here so (laughs) you'd have to get pretty close with the spoke signals hey so you have some cash on hand or liquid assets that you're looking to invest in the market so what do you do with that how do you enter the market well let me give you some examples of how that cash should work i'm going to start off with this email that i received uh, and then we'll get into some specific numbers the the email is uh, from a, from a local listener, and she says, "What are the minimum down payment requirements to invest? Mm-hmm. And can I use an FHA loan for an investment property?" Really, two different questions altogether. The first one uh, is, "How much do you need down?" Well, as far as a percentage, we can get away with financing a, a, a investor with twenty percent down. The rates are not nearly as good as if you did 25% down. Okay. So if you can muster up an extra 5% down, it, it could be worth a quarter percent or so uh, in your interest rate. The second part of the question is really important that you understand there are different types of loan programs out there that qualify for different types of properties and purposes. FHA is a fantastic loan program. Lots of people have taken advantage of it. It's about 30% of all the loans we do. Uh, in my office, quite a bit of of FHA loans. And VA loans are also fantastic. The FHA loans are federally insured program. It is a federally insured program that gives homeowners, uh, typically with low down payments, the ability to buy property. However, pay attention, it does not qualify you for an investment property. Okay. Okay? So an FHA loan must be for an owner-occupied property that you plan to live in and you have to commit to living in that for at least a year. You're gonna sign documents that say that you're gonna live there for that long. Uh, It's important that you follow those rules. You don't wanna just go take advantage and use an FHA loan to get an investment property because FHA has been known, HUD has been known to do post-closing certifications. I haven't heard of it myself, I haven't seen it happen, but it's something you wanna be aware of. Plus fraud is just, it's really a five letter word that's a four letter word, it's bad stuff. So don't participate in any uh, unscrupulous lending activities. That's how we all got in the place we're in, folks, is people were doing stuff they weren't supposed to do. So do not try to get an FHA loan. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that this, uh, in this email, um, the person who wrote this email was suggesting that they would do that. But uh, some people have called my office saying, "Hey, what 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 are the uh, you know, what happens if I do use an FHA loan and I decide to move out the next month?" Well, first off, I'm not going to do your loan knowing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a license and I have I like to sleep at night really well, and uh, knowing that I'm putting people in the wrong loans doesn't help with that at all. So let's talk about what kind of loans you can get. So you can qualify with just 20 to 25 percent down. It's better if you put more money down. So let me give you an example. I've written some of this out so I can sort of walk people down two different paths. Let's say you are someone who has about $30,000. It's in your retirement account or it's in some sort of uh, liquid money market account maybe. Uh, Retirement accounts I would not recommend pulling from because you'll pay penalties. Mm -hmm. But if it's in a liquid or a money market account uh, or a CD and and it's ready for you to pull out, that cash, $30,000 could get you a pretty decent rental property. You could qualify for something around $150,000. That's a condo or that's a smaller house in some, some parts of Sonoma County. And you're gonna be able to rent that home for $1,200 a month, maybe $1,400 a month if it's a house. Your payment on that is gonna be less than your rental uh, income. If you if you borrow $120,000, your payment's only gonna be about $1,000 a month. So you've got this buffer for, uh, you know, maybe you have a tenant who moves out, so there's a vacancy rate of just under 10% right now. 
So you've got a vacancy, some vacancy money there that you can save up and accrue. Or you can take that extra 200 bucks and use it towards your principal and pay down your asset even faster. Pay down your loan so that your um, loan becomes more of an asset and less of a liability is the more accurate way of looking at that. It's, uh, it, it's even better for homeowners who have a little bit more cash. Here's why. Let's say you have fifty or $60,000. You could do one of two things. You could take all that money and put it down and get a better property that's going to make $1,800 to $2,000 a month in rental income. And your mortgage payment would maybe be a couple hundred dollars less than that. And maybe that house will appreciate faster because it's a nicer, higher desirable house. Or you could take that 50 or 60 grand and go buy yourself two homes. Oh, that's right. You right? could, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. You, you could put yourself in a stronger position over time. The reason you're buying the first home is because you think it's going to go up in value and you think it's a safe place for you to put your money. So why not park money into two of them? Then you have a, a twice the return with the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting all that money into one property, put that money divided by two into two properties. They'll both go up the same, except now instead of one going up, you have two going up in value. So it's a, it's a simple strategy. Sure, it exposes your money to a little bit of... Uh, of risk uh, if the housing market were to fall now you have two assets that are depreciating faster but I again as far part of the perfect storm segment we just talked about I don't think we need to worry about that the same as we used to I think we should be cautious but I think with responsible lending and with choosing the right home and making sure that you've done your inspections and that you're not gonna have a lot of issues with it I think doing that uh, doing buying two properties with 50 or 60 grand is a good way to go here in Sonoma County and you wouldn't be the only one uh, doing that a lot of uh, purchases right now about a third of all purchases are investor purchases hmm. but here's the part that really bothers me I don't get it I I get part of it but he here's the here's the problem and I'll tell you what I think about it okay because I know everything <laughs> you have a radio show so of course you know everything <laughs> I have a radio show and I know everything no I'm just kidding uh, but here's what bothers me is when people take all their cash and they go buy an investment property with all the cash that they have and they don't leverage any of it. So whoopie do, you just took 150 grand and you just bought one condominium. And you're gonna make $1,200 a month off of that. I don't know if that's the best way to put your money out there. In fact, I don't think it is. I think what you should do is you should take your 150 grand and you should go buy two houses with $70,000 down each. Would you have a much better interest rate by having that much down? You're gonna have one? a good interest rate mm -hmm. You're gonna because you're buying a house especially and not a condo. You're going to find yourself being able to take advantage of the tax uh, tax mm -hmm. code a little bit more in your favor. All kinds of things that you can really uh, benefit from in the tax code. And I'm not a CPA, so maybe one of these times we'll have a CPA to talk about that. Uh, but you have multiple appreciating assets. And yeah. cost of funds is so low right now, folks. You should be leveraging where it makes sense. And right now it makes sense. Buy a home low in a depressed market, flat market and get yourself into a new investment strategy. Don't spend all your cash. 34% of you are buying all these houses with cash. There's some strategies there, but I think it's better to, to do some leveraging. We're gonna go to our final break. Stay with us. Next segment's gonna be pretty interesting. I've got a case study that might surprise you. How could someone who has a Fannie Mae loan not qualify for HARP? Stay tuned. Hey there, Sonoma County. This is George Adair, host of the all-new Loan Show on KSRO. I'm inviting KSRO listeners to join me on Wednesday at 1230 for a lighthearted but informative look at mortgage and real estate matters that affect you. I want your calls and questions, so join me Wednesdays at 1230 for the Loan Show on KSRO. Folks, you know I'm always touting the benefits of a 15-year fixed loan, right? My logic is simple. Most people will save over hundred grand in interest. You could actually own your home free and clear by the time you retire. I want you to know that Bay Equity Home Loans is offering a 15-year loan at 3.25%, APR 3.39%. So call me at 583-8100 and see if you qualify for this amazingly low fixed-rate loan and start paying your loan off for good. Call 583-8100 and see how much you can save. That number again is 583-8100. Don't forget to tune into The Loan Show on KSRO every Wednesday at 1230. Department of Corporations, number 6053919. And MLS 238915, Equal Housing Lender. Life is full of celebrations. Celebrations that deserve gifts that are not so ordinary, rather very extraordinary. That's why Carolina & Company is your celebration destination. 
New baby, new spouse, new house. Carolina and Company takes beautiful gifts and makes them truly personal with exquisite custom monogramming. From bath to garden, dining room to kitchen, Carolina and Company. From towels to totes, robes and wraps, gifts for her, him, tots and tweens, even your furry friends. All personalized with names, initials or a personal message. Dress up your home inside and out with beautiful seasonal accessories and permanent botanicals that bring the outdoors in season after season. There's no place like Carolina and Company. No gift you'll give is ever the same. Located at 105 Third Street, just across from the Hyatt, and at carolinaandco.com. When it comes to celebrating, never settle for ordinary. It's the Lone Show on KSRO with George Adair. Call in with your questions now at 636 1350. And we're back. Final segment of The Lone Show. I'm George Adair. You're listening to The Lone Show on KSRO 1350. Hey, uh, we were just teasing into this uh, break with a strange situation that I've come across. HARP, those of you who don't know, is a home affordable refinance program put out by the government. Bay Equity is a direct lender with Fannie Mae. We offer the HARP program. So I had a borrower, a longtime friend of mine, actually, and a borrower who came in several months ago, and she said, hey... I want to, actually, she found me on Facebook. She didn't come in. She says, I want to see if I can qualify for an interest rate reduction. So I did all my research and figured out that she was just about even, I thought, on her value, and that she qualified for HARP. Went to the Fannie Mae website. Yep, sure enough, Fannie Mae loan. House is in Petaluma. I could not get her HARP loan approved with Fannie Mae. Couldn't figure it out. Checked the values probably around 110% underwater it turned out so you know we we're really trying to isolate the reasons for this so you know I'm sitting here answering myself George you've got a borrower who has a harp eligible loan great credit great income really good assets nice home what's the problem couldn't figure it out called our investor Fannie Mae representative uh, of uh, that basically said hey look the DU system, this is an automated system, is going to decline this thing at over 105% loan to value ratio. Mm. And I said, it doesn't make any sense. We we're supposed to go to 125%. Doesn't make any sense to me. And they said it's because of the area. There's some geographic limitations in declining markets. And just because we offer it uh, out there as a program doesn't mean we offer it unilaterally everywhere. So I checked again. A month or two later and then I checked again just uh, about three weeks ago and I was just I was shocked frustrated and folks I think you should get frustrated you know I, my job is to help give people good information and ideas help them improve their situations but what are you doing out there to let your government officials your elected officials know about how frustrating it is to hear that there's this program and you're not eligible for it. You didn't. You don't know whether or not Fannie Mae owns your loan or not. You probably don't really care if Fannie Mae owns your loan or not. Before 2010, no one really even knew who Fannie Mae was unless mm -hmm. you worked in the mortgage industry. So if you if you got a loan just like your neighbor did, and it's a 30-year fixed, and theirs is a 30-year fixed, aren't you really ticked off that you can't get a HARP loan and they can? I, I would be. I think you should be. I think people should be madder than hell. I think you should voice your opinions. I think you should go on our website and tell us how you feel about it. I think you should give me your calls and ideas.